Good morning and welcome to our live talk program. This is Lloyd Grove here, your host on Revive Reform Radio, doing our live talk program covering natural health and your Wednesday morning rise and shine. Now, this morning, our topic here is why not ask, why you should not ask your oppressor for help, why you should not ask your oppressor for help is our topic here for this morning as we look at natural health and our primary focus will be mental health. So welcome to our live talk program as we discuss this very important topic. Hopefully you had a blessed night rest and you're ready to take on this day and stop. Thank you for stopping by with me here this morning. Uh, let us pray. We thank you God again for your love, for the wisdom that you show us from your word of how to deal with these common problems that are common to humanity. Pray to may bless us, dear Lord, as we talk and study together. May you give us wisdom, dear Lord, to know how to live and to have our being, dear Lord, in the end, to live lives of overcomers. May you bless us, dear Lord, and may we not be gobbled up by all the evils that are in this world by men. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So our topic again for this morning here is um, why should um, why you should not uh, why you should not ask your oppressor for help why you should not ask your oppressor for help um, the whole reason why is there in your life is to oppress you so you have to get that in your mind and learn to survive without the aid of your oppressor the aid of your oppressor is oppressive oppressive so you need to get that in your mind so we have an article that I want to share about what's going on up there in Canada with the native peoples in Canada uh, but before I go that I have a little blurby I want to share um, from this article about um, it's entitled from USA Today now that USA Today but NBC News it's entitled nearly untreatable gonorrhea spread globally so an untreatable form of gonorrhea is spreading globally so just it's important to stay in a straight and narrow um, drug resistant gonorrhea is becoming more common making a one's easily treated infection into a, a nightmare disease, the World Health Organization said on Friday. Gonorrhea, known commonly as the clap or the drip, is one of the most common sexual transmitted diseases there is. Anyone who is sexually active is at risk and any kind of sex, including anal oral sex, can pass it along. It was once easily treated with a quick dose of antibiotics, but like all bacteria, all bacterial infection, strains have evolved that can evade the mechanism used by antibiotics. And um, now the World Health Organization says they are becoming increasingly common. The bacteria that cause gonorrhea are particular smart. Every time we use a new class of antibiotics to treat the infection, the bacteria evolve to resist them, um, Dr. Thea, Theodore Wee says. Penicillin was the original simple cure. Now, who reports 97% of countries report gonorrhea that resists um, ciprofloxacin, 81% found, um, have found cases that resist various different other types of um, the, 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 the drugs. These cases may just be the tip of the iceberg since systems to diagnose and report untreated infections are lacking in lower income countries where gonorrhea is actually more common, we says. And a few cases have been reported um, that were almost completely untreatable. To date, three extensively drug-resistant um, gonorrhea cockle strains with high level resistance to um, cetriazone um, superbug have also been reported in France, Japan and Spain. So in France, Japan and Spain, we and colleagues wrote in their report. So just wanted to pass this very important little blurb along that more and more all class of diseases, um, viruses, Bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics, and as these resistance inc in increase, um, what simply is happening is that we're a person now would live a certain lifestyle and don't worry about the effects of the lifestyle because they can run to the doctor or to the hospital and they can get a shot or some drug and it can wipe the infection out. Now, because of the constant um, 
morphing and mutation of the various different viruses and bacteria. This is not the case anymore. So the practices that were long instituted by the Bible are still in vogue and in effect, although many people believe that drugs have made it possible for them to ignore um, proper protocols and proper principles, but it's not the case. So for your health, it's best to follow the principles of the Bible and you'll be quite um, protected or have some protection there. So just wanted to show this little note there and um, to move on to greater things. Now, what I'm going to go to now is this article. This article here is um, found again in NBC News, and it's dealing with the suicidal problem or suicide problem that is amongst the native people. And I'm thinking this is in Canada again. And um, wanted to look at this um, as I look at this topic here with you, which are focal for this morning, focal point here, why you should not ask your oppressor for help, why you should not ask your oppressor for help. There's a reason why the oppressor is there. If his help, the Bible says, even the tender mercies of the cruel is wicked, or the tender mercies of the wicked is cruel. So this article is entitled, Three Canadian Girls Fulfill Suicide Pact, Spotlighted Major Mental Health Crisis. Uh, this is by Phil McCausland, and this is in NBC News again. Now, last summer... Three 12-year-old girls from a small indigenous community in Canada made a suicide pact, according to their families. Since then, their families say they have each taken their own lives, the most recent of which was in mid-June. The death of the girls from Wapakika First Nation, a 400-resident indigenous district in northwestern Ontario, accessible from the outside only by plane, is highlighting an ongoing struggle to properly address mental health issues within the community. Local leaders declare a state of emergency in on June 20, the week after the death, and declare 10% of their population at risk of suicide. The community is in shock, but we are trying to get ourselves going again by working together with a mental health team. Wipakika ban counselor Georgina Winters, who was the grandmother of one of the girls, told NBC News. Local leaders said that they attempted to help the girls and stop them from carrying out the pack when they found out about it last summer, turning to the Canadian government for suicide prevention and health funding. Suicide is the leading cause of death for Indigenous youth and adults up to age 44 in Canada, according to the Centre for Suicide Prevention. The Canadian Broadcast Corporation reported that Health Canada declined the initial request last September because of awkward timing in the federal funding cycle. Then, we peak Kika uh, lost two of the girls to suicide this year. First, uh, Jolene Winters on January 8th, then Chantel Fox two days later. Those two suicides created a lot of turmoil in the community. Alvin Fiddler, Grand Chief of the um, Nis um, Nobi um, Aski Nation, NAM for short, of which the Wipikika First Nation is part. Told NBC News in a phone interview in June, First Nation is a name by which some Canadian Natives people are known. They experienced a number of attempts. Kids were flown out to various parts of the country to assess for assessment and treatment to try to manage what they are experiencing. Then they lost a 12-year-old girl about a week and a half ago, Fiddler wrote. Um, Janira Ronsky, the third 12-year-old girl, was also flown out of the community and put on suicide watch in January after her friend's death. She was found dead of an apparent suicide outside a hockey rink in June, her family said. A statement from her grandmother said that Ronsky um, suffered from oppositional defiant disorder and added that we do not blame anyone for the loss of our granddaughter. Suicide continued to be an, an issue in Wipikika and the 48 other First Nation community that make up NAM, leaders say. 
Since 1986, 528 suicides have occurred among first um, among the communities, according to the Nis Nisnobi Akski Nation M A N N A N, and the highest rate of suicide is among children, 10 to 14. Wikika Chief Brennan Shenawap went to uh, went sent a letter dated January July 18, 2016 to Health Canada requesting help to prevent future suicide. We are in direct need of addressing some mental health needs and support. The letter said, we have some dire experience with youth suicide in the past and we are hoping to establish support system in place to help out our young people in their mental health struggles. The requested budget in the letter included salary and benefits for four mental health workers, their tent, their rent, training, material, travel, computer, um, and network for a total of three hundred and seventy six thousand seven hundred and six dollars. Health Canada did not fulfill the request until May 9th of the following year, leading to criticism that they ignored a plea for help. But according to Health Canada, they did not receive the letter until September, and even then it was sent to the wrong office. We did, didn't say no, Health Canada Senior Medical Advisor Maris Duret told NBC News. The letter was submitted after much of our budget had already been earmarked. We just needed to find a new way to fund it. To make up the last year's funding, they provided Wipikika with 95000 for the remaining months of 2016 and has sent 380000 for 2017. According to Duret, Wipikika already cashed the check for the $380,000 and four mental health workers have been hired. The NAM, however, accused the Health Canada of only contributing $95,000. Duret said it must have been a misunderstanding. It's also a long-standing misunderstanding and sense of government mistrust that may say, um, many say is born out of residents, residential schools that indigenous people were forced to attend as a mean of assimilation. And I pause here a little bit because if you listen to most Americans, they'll say, if you're from abroad you must, and you are truly American, you must assimilate. And this is kind of like a mindset, but this is also here for what I've seen in various different documentaries, more aggressive and oppressive in Canada. Just from what I've seen, from my information, I know what you've seen. From the 19th century until the last school shut down, shut its door in 1996, the scars of those schools are still etched deep in indigenous community across Canada and Aboriginal groups as well as Canadian government believe them to be a major reason for the mental health crisis. Now, keep that in mind. I'm going to come back to that idea. So, um, and I'm sure you've heard about this. If you have looked into anything that's going on in Canada, the oppression there is that they have these schools that would basically train um, the indigenous people to assimilate them to be Canadian, Canadians. In other words, to lose their identity and become Europeans. So this is what happened. But you know, to think about this all how, how raw and current this is. This happened up until nineteen ninety six. So this is recent. This is not like something talking about Jim Crow law was in America until nineteen fifties, sixties, and then they flipped over to drug the drug war the war on drugs to destroy the black community. This is something that um was going on up until nineteen ninety six. And so you have a people that are being marginalized, oppressed and beaten down. And they're sad, so to speak, and want to kill themselves. Then in order for them to get the help they need, they turn to the people who are oppressing them and asking them for mental health. And um, how is that going to work? Um, they're going to they're gonna help you? Uh, that may kind of make no sense, but we keep reading here the article. Residential schools have high rates of physical and sexual abuse and forced, um, forced a devaluation of their native culture, causing difficulties in early childhood development, according to Dr. Lawrence um, K. Meyer, the director of McGill University Division of Social and Transcultural Psychiatry, which focuses on the mental health care of indigenous people, immigrants, and refugees. <laughs> Um, it changed how people dealt with child rearing, 
it changed how people dealt with distress it had an indirect impact on, on parenting and had a large effect when people found their way back to the community Kermeyer told the NBC News and that impact has not disappeared continue to affect the newest generation of indigenous Canadians he said studies show that the more the more generations of your family were exposed to residential schools the more susceptible you are to distress and perhaps even suicide Kermeyer added this is an issue that is not limited to Wipikika or and the First Nation children the suicide rate of Inuit youth in Canada is 11 times higher than national average and among the highest in the world the Center of Suicide Prevention reported among First Nation male and female youth 15 to 24 the suicide rate is more than five and seven times higher respectively than national average according to the center a national survey of First Nation communities conducted in 2008 and 2010 found that members believe alcohol and drug abuse was their number one challenge, 83%, housing, 71%, and employment, 66% were um, the two other concern. So drugs, alcohol, housing, and employment, basically structure of your life give you drugs you know I, I remember reading Ellen G. White I pause here a little bit again Ellen G. White just just so this doesn't slip my mind talking about how what would what was on a problem was is that the Christian who claimed to be um, um, what do you call it modern or, or or civilized will go to the uncivilized savages quote unquote and they would bring them say they bring them a better culture better better religion and then they'll introduce them to like pork and alcohol, drugs, and make them even more savage than themselves. Christ talked about it to the Jews. He said to the Jews, they would go and become, win one proselyte, or proselyte, and make the proselyte twice the son of hell as themselves. They're going to hell, and they're going to send the proselyte to hell. So when you look at these numbers, the numbers are really reflective of that. And this is something that was happening in her time, hundred and something years ago. And we can still see to this day this is um, happening. This is why my topic is why you should not, not ask your oppressor for help. You have to figure it out yourself um, or die trying. Um, so we continue reading here back to the article. The last Aboriginal economic progress report released 2015 by the national aboriginal economic development board concluded that the number of first nation people on reserves with a job in canada had dropped from 39 percent to 35.4 percent between 2006 and 2011 just think about that uh, you jump across the border back into america into areas where there used to be big industrial areas that a lot of blacks have jobs and they took those jobs and they shipped them abroad primarily to China leave the blacks unemployed so the blacks were saying we need jobs they're gonna stay unemployed because again you do not go to your person and ask him to help you out he's not there for that you gotta get that in your mind um, Kevin and uh, Tong Chier, uh, Red Ever, siblings and members of the First Nation had taken note of the growing number of suicide in their community and are attempting to combat it with their We Matter campaign. The nonprofit encourages community to provide a forum for people to share their own experience and positive messages. While they have a number of success stories, the Red verse explain there is an ongoing problem because there is no single source for the suicide. It's a series of problems that the First Nation face. When it comes to indigenous youth, suicide is definitely come down to a sense of hopelessness, says um Tanshia Red verse. Historical um traumas are one of the factors, but there are so many issues that a young person face, including intergenerational trauma mental health bullying addiction lack of opportunity issues um in the home and community key dean um balsa sil 13 is a member of the danu no dan daninu q first nation in fort resolution northeast territory he said he nearly killed himself last year until he called 
a helpline. Um, Basil's Basili uh, said he was particularly dis depressed after his cousin committed suicide on the reservation, and he knows that other communities are struggling as well. Now the 13-year-old wants to help people, those people who are depressed and having a tough time, in particular in the We Matter campaign. I want people, instead of thinking about the bad things, think about the things that motivate you and the people who you've lost he told NBC News. Think about what you want. Always try to stay happy, even when it's not the best time. So notice there, the suicide is caused by many different things. But primarily here at the end of the article, it simply says that the suicides are caused from a sense of hopelessness. When you have a situation where you're dependent upon so much from those who have beaten you down for centuries and destroyed your old way of lifestyle, and are constantly doing things to destroy you. Um, it is tough to say, well, you're going to go to those same group of people and say, could you help us out? Can you give us funding and give us ways? You have to start developing a mindset where you start being a complainer or a whiner, just accept the fact that this is the reality and it's going to always be the reality and I'm not going to look for any help. I'm going to keep trying and if it busts my back or I, I die doing it, I'm just going to die doing it. Or even if they have to kill me because they see I'm trying to dig my way out of the problems that they have put me in. Then I'm going to die doing it because it's tough to go to people who are oppressing you and say, do you see that you're oppressing me? And they say, oh yeah, I can see that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. They don't see it. Any complaint you make is, is falling in deaf ears because they don't see what they're doing because what they're doing is what they're supposed to do. Because normally in this type of situation, uh, the, the people have a manifest destiny. They have a complex of superiority. And they think you're going to live the way you're going to live because you're inferior. And they're going to live the way they're going to live because they're superior. So that is the mindset you're going up against. You know, if you try to have these discussions in a form of is, is it racism or is it this type of thing, you're wasting your time. Um, the only discussion you need to have is how you're going to get yourself into the place that you need to get yourself and how you're going to be successful and how you're not going to succumb to negative thoughts and go kill yourself. You're just doing a favor for the person. You can go online all the time to places like USA Today and YouTube and you listen to these people talk who they have historically oppressed um, people who are not of their you know their race and they talk in such a disparative way. If you ever even give an inkling that the oppression is affecting you. You just can't give in to that type of talk. Um, even if it's the reality, you just have to know that says you, you're going you're gonna to keep fighting, you're going to keep struggling, and you're going to make it out. And if you don't make it out but you die trying, it's okay too. But you're not going to die kill, by killing yourself. That's definitely not going to be. You're going to have to work amongst yourself to lift yourself out. Because everything that the person is doing is structured to keep you oppressed. Just think about one of the major philosophies out of our universities and colleges is evolution. Evolution says anybody from European race are the superior in all aspects of life, spiritual, mental, physical, and that is the type of thing they teach. You cannot submit to their education. So one of the first things I want to say here before I go into some Bible text, you got to deal with the philosophy. What a problem in I'm going to say in many of these First Nation communities and many communities that are oppressed is that the, the educational system is not just receiving math and English, um, but is receiving certain ideology that keep that oppressive state going because oppression is primarily how you can affect a person mentally. Physical is part of it, but if a man is educated, you, you, you have to kill him. You can't really oppress him. Because you, you only you only thing you can physically stop him by is by physically arrest him or kill him, which something that is done extensively in the black community. So when you look at this, one of the first things you have to do is get rid of the mental slavery. Until you free your mind from mental slavery, you're not moving forward. Because that's where where there is the man or the devil gets us. And the moment he can get his ideology in your mind and communicate to you in various different methodology, whether it be sociology, history, um, evolution, um, even false biblical theory, and he can get you 
on those levels. He can keep you oppressed and keep you under your own evil whip and make you feel like you're less than, so you want to go kill yourself because you don't see that you're one of God's beautiful creature created in God's image. You see yourself as some evolved cretin that is less than other people. So you, you got to get rid of that type of philosophy. Is You know, his philosophy of capitalism because if you're in that mindset, you can't work together to get yourself out of the trap. Because the whole concept of capitalism is basically every man for himself. And you oppress your fellow human being to move forward. But if you're already in the bottom of a bucket or you're in a bucket with other crabs, that philosophy doesn't work to bring lift up oppressed people. Because you're not on the top of the bucket or outside the bucket. You're in the bucket. So you got to get rid of those type of philosophy. You have to see yourself as a Christian. And this to me is a Christian ideology. Not as always taught to oppress people, but as always taught by Christ. Where you free your mind from mental slavery. You see your, your fellow human being as, as someone that can help you up. As someone to give the philosophy that we're not about to capitalize on each other. We're about to help each other and grow together. When you do that, you can move forward. You know, some people wonder why I think and I be so independent because I believe in independence, not only in church. That's why I do independent church. And I'm independent in all my thinking because I'm not going to the person that's beating me up in the corporate church and then say to him, show me a lifeline, send me a pastor to minister to me, to help me out. He's not going to help me out. He's helping himself out. So when you look at this with the First Nation and with any other group that think they oppress, you got to go back to the Bible. So we're going to spend the rest of our time and we're going to go into the Bible. I'm going to glean some biblical philosophy. Because when you think about the stories of the Bible, the story of the Bible was always, had always come in this fashion. The quickest way to understand the Bible is to understand it's a story of overcomers. People who went up against great odds, against being oppressed, being beaten down by one group or the other. It wasn't about any particular group. Human beings like to oppress other human beings. I hope I didn't lose you in the last few minutes because sometimes if you know somebody listen to me, they might lose me because they think I'm talking about their particular group. If you read the Bible, you get this very quick idea that human beings like to oppress other human beings. The moment you start the Bible now, you read Genesis and you start to see that human beings are like that. Then, bam, you come to Exodus. And the moment you come to Exodus, it gives you a narrative that one group of people is oppressing and enslaving another group of people. So this is not nothing new. This is something that has always happened through human history. And the difference, though, is that the power of the Egyptian was so strong that only God or the narrative was God decided to free a people that couldn't be free. And the reason why, because when you've been oppressed for generation after generation, the mental slavery becomes almost impossible to break. But somehow happened that the Lord was going to do it, but not in the way he was thinking, which was he's Moses, um, in a way that was different. He was going to do it through his mighty arm. Moses, I thought, because he was brought up in the Pharaoh's um, home, that he thought he was going to do it through, you know, fight general, the generalship. God showed him that there's always different ways. So this is one of the first stories you come up in the Bible. That there's other ways to free yourself that not going to take, that's not going to use force. Very important for you to understand. Many times the Bible showed that God wants to free you. God wants to make you free, but God's method is not always our method. Sometimes wars were put in place. Other times it wasn't wars. And even when the wars were put in place, which I'll say in a few seconds, many times the wars were fought again through God's mighty power. So keep that in mind. God always want to free the oppressed. God want to let the oppressed go free. Isaiah chapter 58. So when you understand this, when you start to get this in your mindset, you understand that whatever your oppression is, whether it's a group of people oppressing you, or it's substance, or it's some sin. God wants to make you free. But it starts with you understanding that, and you yourself want to be free. The moment you get that in your mind, you can't be free, because God will work the freedom. The moment you sit there in that oppressive state, you just go ahead to want to kill yourself. So you think about the Exodus story. You read that story, you might have missed it, 
It's about God freeing a group of people. That's the obvious. You go to the story like in the Judges. Every time Israel went into sin, they went into oppression. oppression because sin opens us up to being um, oppressed and to be taken captive. Captive by people, captive by substance, captive by our lust. We can be taken captive, but God still works way to free, free us. Remember the story of Gideon. There's a story of some a group of people that, again, were a Jew again. They were once captive. They became free. They fall into sin. They became captive again. And God worked through Gideon to free them. But again, if you remember that story, it was the mighty arms that God used. Although it was 300 men with Gideon, God used miracle and his own supernatural power to free them. Because he wanted to show that I can do this thing. I'm your deliverer. Um, and you go through various different stories, whether it's David, whether it's um, various different even prophets, um, people, whether it's John the Baptist or Jesus, who were freeing the people not so much from physical oppression, but more so spiritual oppression, moral oppression, mental slavery to sin. Remember Christ tell the Pharisees that you are of the father of the devil and the works of the devil you want to do because you're basically enslaved. And they say, we're not enslaved. We're free. He said, no, you're enslaved by sin. Whatever the oppression, God wants to free the people, but God can't free us in sin, number one. So we get there because, again, God wants to make us free. But the primary way that God is free on us, he has to change our mindset. Because oppression and being oppressed is normally part of the mindset. This is why when you're oppressing people, you have to control their education. If you don't control the education, you can't oppress the person. Because you, 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 you basically can kidnap a person. But for the person to be not kidnapped, you're not holding a gun at their head. And for them to stay oppressed, their educational system has to be destroyed. So this is why, now if you remember what I read in the story, if you've ever looked at what's going on with the First Nation people, the Canadians simply didn't have to hold a gun to their head. All they have to do is just put them through a schooling system. As long as they, they're educated, they're educated to be mentally, mental slave. The mental slavery was educated in them. This is why a person is not free and really can't even desire freedom or even understand what freedom is in ignorance. So this is why you look at it and it says one of the ways that they have to do for themselves is they have to do their own educational system and have to accept the results of that and say, look, I prefer to educate my own and I'm educated out, 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 or, out of out of the Canadian system. And the Canadian government literally have to come in and send troops in to kill us, but we refuse to do their education. But if you continue with their educational system, even if you're not forced to go to their quote-unquote schools because they closed in the 90s, you're, you're still going to be oppressed. You see, this is one of the problems with the black churches and the black communities. They have never figured out that what they need to stop doing is sending their kids to the regular educational system. Because that is where the problem starts. As long as you, you, you can perpetuate oppression of a people, as long as you keep them mentally enslaved. And you don't have to force them to go to the school. You just have to make them freely go to your educational system. That is going to continue to reinforce the negativity and the oppressive con you know, concept. Because it's not just what you teach a person, it's what you don't teach the person. And if you are familiar with that. It's not what you teach them often, it's what you don't teach them. It's how you teach them the information. So they could say, yeah, we learned history, but they never learned any history. Yeah, we learned math. Yeah, they learned some math, but they love us. They learned the subpar standard math. So as long as you're teaching them, you can control them in a certain way. So this is why it was so important that if you notice every information that you read about in the Bible, the major part of the Reformation was the education, especially the biblical education or gospel education. This is why Reformation always come with teaching, preaching. If you look at any story, even modern time with Martin Luther King Jr. or with the gentleman over there, of I forget his name, over there, Gandhi in India, it is not so much about arms. It's about trying to educate the people as to their rights and certain things. So when we look at this and you understand this, you can get this in your mind, you can understand why, you know, like why would I get up every morning and teach? Why would I believe it's important to 
not sit under the education of corrupt pastors. Because again, they keep the church in the way. You know, people come to and say, what's going on? Because of the education. The pastors go to the seminary. They give them false education. They come back to the church. And they keep the members of the church in a sinful state. Some people say, I thought the people just sinned. No, it's what the pastor's teaching. Because the pastors, if they teach right, the people will overcome sin. So the oppression is primarily in the way you educate. You, you control the pulpit. You control the people. The people are sheeple, not sheep. Of Christ, Christ pastor. So keep that in mind. And we're going to go to some text. So remember that your oppression comes primarily from what you've been educated. And if you're educated a certain way, um, you will continue a certain way of thinking. Because your mindset and your thinking and the way you process information and deal with the world outside of you all has to do with your education. This is why, as I say, the schools weren't closed until 1996. So hence, the school weren't closed until 1996. They continued those schools because as long as they continued those schools, those people were going to continue being suicidal. And this is why you, you notice, like, again, if you have the people who are trying to destroy you, be your teachers, be your police, you, you know, be your judge, be your everything. They're going to keep shooting you and keep doing whatever because they, they don't like you. So how do you go to people that don't like you? My topic again, why you... Sh why you should not ask your oppressor for help. If the people don't like you, they're not going to do to benefit you. And if they see you progress, they're going to try to stop your progress. Because your progress hurts them. I don't know why. Why we all can't do well. Because they're in a different mindset. They're doing capitalism. They're doing, you know, all kind of racism. and doing all kind of stuff like that. That's their focal point. They don't believe in live and let live. And you know the principle of human beings. All human beings have this principle without Jesus. If they can't control you, they destroy you. You can see that very clear in Elijah West writing. If they can't control you, they destroy you. All human beings. I don't trust nobody that don't follow Jesus. And so when you understand this, you understand. You don't give yourself into the hands of people that are educated into the devil system because they're going to treat you like the devil would want to treat you. And so it's the same thing. So I say here, you got to know how to take care of your own. The first place you start at is in the school. You start with education. You educate the mind. You move forward. I don't believe in no public education. That's for the public, the Goyams. I believe that you take charge of it and your children are educated in, in your system or you homeschool them. You don't send them to the people that are going to beat them up and give them a subpar education. You in America, same educational system but different results. Because the teachers... They always go back to the teachers, the wardens, the police, the whatever. So this is where the problem lies. You, If you understand it, just understand it, you do for yourself and for your church. And that's what I teach in my church. Ecclesiastes 1 verse 9 says, The things that are being, it, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. There is no new thing under the sun. This is why biblical history is so important. This is why people always fall prey to oppression if you don't understand biblical history. And I guarantee I'm saying this, and there's most churches, in especially urban areas, don't even know what I'm talking about. But yet, it's biblical history. You go into the Bible, you understand that human beings will oppress other human beings. You don't sit there and wait for it to happen. You don't wonder if this is a truth. Don't follow the simpletons who are oppressing you and then say the Bible is not true. Ignore them and their garbage. You have to understand that you are sitting down to be oppressed even by your, your, your brother or your sister. Don't play the fool. Your husband, your wife will oppress you. A person that doesn't have Jesus Christ will oppress you. Whatever has been or already been, it's been done and done and it's going to be done again. So when you read the story of the Inuits, it's like you read the story of the Jews, or you read the story of the Moabite and the Tish, you know, <laughs> the Moabite and the Hittite and the Perizzites. They are oppressing each other, and if they catch you, they oppress you too. You gotta know how to avoid oppression, and you gotta know: do not give over your kids to be educated by your oppressors, because they'll train them to be failures. Very important because whatever is done, it has been done already. This is why it's very important you understand 
one of the masters of it, this type of mindset is the Catholic. The Catholic never go anywhere without starting schools because as long as you can catch the kids and train them into their teens, they'll forever be zombies for the system or for their system. You understand schooling is important. And I'm emphasizing this now. Somebody said, but aren't there other things? Yeah, there are other things, but they're pale in comparison. If you control the mind, you control the body. This is why you don't need to have oppressed people have a gun at their 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 neck or their 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 head. You go to Chicago, what well, you're gonna see, you're gonna think <laughs> you're gonna think young men, the young men that are living in Chicago, for majority of them are in my mindset. They're gonna be my mindset. That's why they're shooting and killing each other. Their mindset has been trained in the system. Many of them are on the drugs. They don't use natural remedies and herbs. They don't, they, they, they don't even know what I'm talking about. They're just using the regular drugs. They believe in probably a whole bunch of them believe there's no God. They believe they evolve. All this type of stuff. They see themselves as capitalists. They're capitalizing on each other by selling drugs to each other and so forth. You don't have to go in there and oppress them. You just have to control their brains. So, whatever has done, been done. You study the Bible to understand how human beings function. It's just human beings. It's not one particular group of people. Go to Africa, you can prove this real quickly. There are black people over there oppressing other black people. Human beings oppress each other. Tribe oppressing tribe. That's just life. First John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. First John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. Said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Straightforward. This is why they try to take the Bible out of our hands because in that day is a devil because when you have christ in your heart you overcome it the world remember the story whatever had happened in the past already had happened over and over again the story of the bible over and over again especially in the areas of like the prophets minor prophets major prophets is that the people would just go into sin and then they oppress they they, they cry out to god and they say the oppression is too much and God deliver them. God send them normally a prophet. The prophet start to educate them again. Lord will send them the Bible because they would normally give up on the Bible. And then they get beaten down. They cry out God, reveal the word of God to them. Send a prophet, send somebody. And a, a king, a patriarch, somebody come and start teaching the Bible again. And the stupor of the devil lift off of them and they become free again. It is when they have the following God. The freedom comes. This is why it's called the Dark Ages. The Catholic Church was able to oppress people in the Dark Ages again because it removed the Bible. It removed truth, righteousness, and it could control the educational system and tell, teach the people, and keep, well, not even teach them, keep most of them in ignorance. And the few that they taught, they teach them Latin so that they, it was, they had some secret knowledge. This is the concept of like Illuminati. They're the illuminated one and everybody else is dumb, dumb dumbs. And that's the way. So when you have Christ in the heart, you have light. And you come to the light that your deeds may be reproved. And you walk in the light. And all of a sudden the freedom comes. When you have the light of this life and the world, which is Jesus, you ain't killing yourself. Because you have light. The darkness doesn't overcome you. But when you're overcome by darkness, then you want to kill yourself. And the devil loves that. So, Revelation chapter 3, verse 21, Revelation 3, verse 21 says, To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. So, when we overcome, this is what the Lord wants us to do. If you Again, if you read the stories of the Bible, people miss what the Bible is about. The stories of the Bible are about people who overcome at great odds. They overcome, they overcome spiritual, um, spiritually. They overcome morally. They overcome health. They overcome in business. They overcome social, whether it be with their family and their friends. They overcome in their careers. This is a story of the Bible. People that go up, goes up against great odds that it seem impossible. It seemed like it was not going to be possible for them to overcome, and they overcome. And this is what you want. You want to live a life spiritually the best. Again, you can't do that under mental slavery. 
You can't go to people. I think about this. You're going to Canada. Are you asking Canadians to help you with suicide problem? When you look at America, you look at the group that commit suicide the most. It would be those that are part of the, the upper upper class of the society or the people that are the controllers of society. They have the largest suicide rate. So you have if you if you consider the breakup of the society, the people who probably have the second largest suicide rate, um are being asked to help people have the largest suicide rate. They they can't help each other. They have problems. So spiritually, you want to overcome. Morally, health-wise, uh, they have a problem with drugs and alcohol. The message of the gospel gets you off that. You live a life of abstinence from substance abuse. Business-wise, they can't get jobs. You create your own jobs. You make your own way. That's why I believe in it. I take all these concepts and this is how I, I live and I teach. And you understand why I live and I teach this way. Because I'm not looking for somebody else over there to go do could do to go do church for me. I do own church. I ain't looking for somebody over there to make my media. I'm gonna make my own media. Alright? You overcome socially. You have success. You overcome it in your family. You you belong to a family, you have your family. If you don't, if you have a family, you're educated to believe that you have a family, but you live in turmoil. You either get that family straight or throw them overboard and go find yourself another family. But you have a family that is a family. Part of breakdown of many of these communities that they don't have family units. I can take you into churches, especially into urban areas, and you can't even know if there's one family in the church. Everybody, even the families that sit on separate side of the, the, the pews, and that's part of the breakdown. Families are are, are a mess. And so that leads to even more depression. You have family unit. Oppressed people are people that don't have family units. You win that battle, as I say. You you gather your family together. And if they don't want to be gathered together, as I say, you'll get yourself another family. But you will have a family. And you will find a society will be more successful. Careers. You either get a business or you go make, build yourself, make yourself a career. Go get yourself a career. When you do this, you find that you're not oppressed. The oppression is in these ways and these means and again you do not go to the people who have historically did everything to destroy you and ask them to help you they're not going to help the help is a, you know it's like they're going to help you you're sinking and you're trying to stay afloat and somebody say yeah i'll throw you a lifeline and they give you a piece of lead to sink you faster and you grab onto the lead why are you grabbing onto the lead they're the one that throw you overboard so when they grab you and throw you overboard you're going to say hey throw me a lifeline they're going to be like oh yeah we throw you a lifeline Throw the hanker in your head and sink you faster. You don't do that. You have to figure out, well, how am I going to help myself? Because these are the people who are trying to destroy me. And when you get that in your psyche, it goes deep. At least for me. Because I ain't going to the people trying to teach me false doctrines. And trying to destroy me. And trying to mess me up. And go to them and say, hey, could you help us out? Send us a pastor. <laughs> You're right. So um, you look to the stories of the Bible, and you'll find that that's what the Bible is trying to get us, to be overcomers. And when you be overcomers, um, you'll be able to fight battles that, it's not going to be easy, but you're going to fight those battles. A story that we get of this is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 through 21. Matthew chapter 17, verse 19 through 21. Then came his, the disciple to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because... Of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So me saying overcoming, somebody will say, Okay, so I just need to believe that I'm gonna overcome and I'm gonna overcome. Yeah, but um, so, sometimes you're going to run into battles that are going to, you're going to need some prayer and fasting. It's going to take you some struggles because you're up against a lot and you're working sometimes. It could feel like on your own because the mindset of accepting being oppressed is so pervasive that you you could find yourself many times feeling like you're on your own. And I'm sure you can understand that. 
Because when you try to move forward, are you in a community? Can you imagine now, say somebody was in Inuit or the First Nation community listening to me and they say, you know what, I get it. I'm going to move forward. Just think about how difficult that's going to be. Because the people around are like, oh no, we're beaten down, we're oppressed. Can't we get our rights? Can't we just, can't we go to the man and ask the man for our rights? Can we get some budget to help our, ourselves with mental health problem? And it's just going to be whining and complaining. They ain't going to get a vision. So now you have to start pushing hard on your own, trying to develop a certain mindset. And you might find one or two people like, yeah, let's, let's instead of spending our time complaining, let's build something together. Let's fight out of this thing. Let's do this with prayer and fasting. Let's know that we're going to suffer and the rest of the people are going to keep popping themselves off and killing themselves or drinking alcohol. We're going to not do that. We're going to move forward. This is something that you have to understand. Sometimes for you to move forward, you have, you have to do it even at the risk of losing people that's around you. It's sad, but that's the reality. Because people just like to succumb and just to the oppression and just stay there complaining. They just complain and whine and cry and moan about their oppression instead of saying, you know, I'm not going to be a capitalist. I'm going to fight my way out. And if you want to help me fight my way out, I'll work with you and we work together. It's hard to find that. I'm telling you, even you see me here and you see I do like, say, independent church. That's not easy because most of the people, they just like to sit there and complain about what's going on in the corporate church. But if you say to them, say, well, build, let's build our own. Let's just do do it the right way. Most people are like, ah, that's too hard. And then stay there, keep complaining then. And watch your kids go to hell. And don't worry about it. But I'm over here. I'm like, no, we, if we come with prayer and fasting, I'm going to fight my way out of this. Some people like, there's unemployment. Let's hey, start our own business then. Let's work together and build our own business. Oh, no, let's complain. They need to give us jobs. Don't worry about that. Just do your own. Just fight your own battles. Just figure out how you're going to not give in to the depression and have to run to drugs. Let's figure out how we're going to educate our children. Let's figure out how we're going to do this. But let's not sit there and just be whiners and complainers. Let's do something. If you're busy doing something, you'll find other people, as I've, I've done, who want to work with you, don't want to be sitting there complaining. I don't care what they want to do. I'm doing my own thing. What they want to do? They want to keep sitting and mashing up the place? Let them do it. But well, we're moving forward. And that's kind of, to me, the mindset that one have to get into. And I know that's not easy, but as I say, I know these things don't come without prayer and fasting. They don't come without sacrifice, self-denial, while other people are just goofing off and playing the fool. You have to be there working hard, trying hard, pressing hard. And, you know, you can get discouraged at times, but look, you're going to succeed. You're going to succeed and you're going to say, I don't know why I made it out, but I made it out. And the others can't keep being there, being depressed and having an upside down smile on their face. I'm going to be smiling because I'm going to be gaining some victories because the Lord promised and the Lord is faithful. And so far, the Lord has been faithful. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, There are no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you that ye may be able to bear it. So there's always a way of escape. When you read the Bible, the Bible is again about one group of people oppressing Sometimes the people oppressing, like in the New Testament, it was the religious leader oppressing the people. Um, various time it was the Jews oppressing the, the, the Christian. It was Nero oppressing the Christian. It was whoever. The story of the Bible is always about one group of people beating up on the other. And you have to figure out how you're going to survive. Somebody said, but it's impossible. Their power is so unlimited. Well, that's the story of Egypt. The story of Egypt is that they had unlimited power. And the, the slaves, the, the Jews, could not get out of the grip. And God sent plagues and pestilence and freedom. You got to believe big things in order for you to be able to move forward. You can't just think, well, all ads are against me. Sure they are. But there's God. And he's against all ads. He's above all odds. Don't worry about it. And, you know, pray, fast, work. And work in faith and where you work and you know that your work is not going to accomplish nothing. You know that there's God 
and God will make it work out for you. And so just, just keep pressing forward. Jude chapter 1 verse 3, Jude 1 3 says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. So you fight the battles. You fight the battles of the Lord. And as I say, if you die trying, you will be you have a special crown waiting for you, a special reward. Because the Lord says the martyrs are a special reward. He has a special place for them. Because they went up against evil, even to bloodshed. And people did kill them. But at least they died trying to get a word out, get a message out. To free people from mental slavery. To free people from spiritual slavery. You want to do that. You just want to sit there and whine. And then go into people who are trying to beat you up and say, throw me a lifeline. Like, why would you do that? Again, make no sense. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 11 through 13 says, Now that, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. I know about both how to abase and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. We gotta get these things in our mindset. We wanna be like those in the Bible. We wanna feed on the heritage of Jacob. We wanna know what it is like to be Israel, to be an overcomer, to go up against the odds and win, and not being there whining and complaining and saying this and asking people to give us our rights. And asking nobody to give me my rights who took it away in the first place. They ain't gonna give it to me. They're going to make me think they give, they give it to me while they take it out on the other hand. That's the reality. In Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10 and 11, Ecclesiastes 9 verse 20, 10 and 11 says, Whosoever, Whatsoever thy hands find to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether you go, thou goest. Everybody's going to die. So if I die trying to be free and try to live a life that is an overcomer, well, I'm going to die anyhow. And I probably should have been dead already anyhow. So every single day I live and every single day I chip away, overcome a little bit more. It makes life more exciting. You can't be depressed on this march. If you're working to overcome and to go up against all odds, it becomes part of your staying alive plan. And if you die doing that, well, well, you know, you could have died being run over by a bus. Better die in excitement, in the zeal of the work, in the excitement of the work. And I really believe this. Every day, just keep chipping away a little bit more. Somebody say, well, you don't accomplish too much. Well, I accomplish a lot more than I probably should have without Jesus and without doing this. So each time I accomplish a little bit more, it motivates me. I say, hey, look, I'm going to get a little bit more. Lord, give me another day. I press on a little bit harder the next day. Why? Because that's the excitement of life. It's a game of life. Somebody, somebody over there, they're saying, oh, I'm depressed, I'm going to play video game, or I'm depressed, I'm going to smoke, I'm going to drink. Why? You can live life and win some victories. When a person go ping, and they hit that thing in the video game, I go ping, and I hit something in life, and I succeed at something, and it makes life more exciting because my life now becomes a video game, and I'm winning the levels. <laughs> that, to me, is better than being there, being depressed, and then go kill yourself. What a waste of a life. Uh, come on over here on Jesus' side and come join me in the battle over here. Life is more exciting this way. Um, and so whatever your hands find to do, do it with all your might. Do it with everything that you have. Remember, the Bible says it's hard for a rich man to go into the kingdom of heaven. So, you know, people think the only way to succeed is to have a lot of money. Well, they go into hell and hell. They oppress you and they go have all the money and they're going to be the greatest capitalist. Well, they go into hell and hell unless they find Jesus. You need to know in your life and in your experience that your focal point is to be an overcomer, to go up against the odds that you have to go up against and to succeed against those odds. When you do this, it'll put a smile on your face and it should certainly encourage me. And if you're doing this, hey, drop me a line. I'll take it and read it. It'll be an encouragement to me also. Hopefully, I've encouraged you today to be better, to be more successful. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, again for your love towards us. And the blessings, dear Lord, of knowing indeed only true God. Pray, Father, that we may be as your son, overcomers, 
and we may truly by faith sit down on the throne with thee and him and celebrate dear lord in your in the glory may you bless us dear father as we go through us of this day that we might truly get into this mindset to be like thee this is our prayer in jesus name amen thanks for being with me on revive for me and looking forward to talking to you tomorrow morning where we should talk about current events until then i pray that you may continue to walk with the king mm -hmm.